So today we have with us Dr. Barbara Simpson. She's well known in the um, ethical <laughs> culture community. <laughs> yes. Oh, my buddies, there you are. She's one of my buddies. And we have invited her to come here tonight because uh, Barbara runs, facilitates, okay. deals with Death Cafe. And so much intrigue comes about in regard to Death Cafe for the people who are not involved with it that we thought it would really be nice to have her come talk to our group so that they would know more about it and can involve themselves. Yeah. So, and when I say that, I'm speaking about myself also. It's something that I'm really am interested to be more involved with. Mm -hmm. So um, Barbara has been working in the in ethical culture for some time now. Mm -hmm. A year, almost a year. Almost a year. Mm -hmm. And in other settings, works with in hospice and nursing homes, a social worker, and uh, really provides a service. So I'm very happy that you're here. <coughs> and I, I know, you know, I anticipate <coughs> the approach to this, which I know has a lot of fun, mm -hmm. as well as information. So now I'm just going to let you begin. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from the north of England, uh, near to Manchester. I'm from a working class family. And um, I'm telling you, my family were very interested in death. You know, whatever, I think I learned to read by reading gravestones because my mother loved to go to the, go to the cemeteries. And she would say, Barbara! What's that word? And I would kind of sound it out. I can remember doing that. So I always had, I, I, whenever I go here anywhere, even now, I have to say, I do want to go to cemeteries. My husband would say, what did you want, you know? But it, it's just always been very, very interesting to me. Um, also, we, we have a tradition in the north of England. Um, well, actually, probably in the south too, except you know, we're sort of more working class in the north. We would we have the, the body of anybody laid out for three days, you know. And um, so when I was a little girl, and my granddad died and my grandma and different people, they were always laid out in our house because we had a very big living a kind of a living room slash lounge, you know. And I remember when Granddad died, he was like my best friend. I was like seven years old, you know. My mother would get my hold of my hand and she'd say, Come along, Barbara, we're going to say goodnight to Granddad. Granddad was in his coffin, like that. And my mother would say, It's all right, you can touch, you can touch, it's good luck to touch. And I remember this one time I was going to the spelling test the following day, so I definitely touched. And it was very cold. And I said to Mommy, I said, Mommy, it's like rocks in the rock garden. It was very, very cold. You know? Yeah. So I I always I, I didn't have a lot of I didn't grow up with a lot of fear about seeing somebody dead died, you know. Because you know, Auntie Alice, she was there, Auntie Elsie, Uncle Tom. They were all laid out at different times, you know, in our living room. And to tell you the truth, I really liked, I liked it. You know why? We had people over. We had a lot of food. We didn't always have a lot of food. But it was the time when you had, you got to eat a lot. My mother wasn't saying I couldn't have too much jelly or too much pie or something like that. I could eat as much as I wanted. So I really liked it. So... For me, you know, the, the funerals and everything were great. So how did, so that's a little bit about my history. Um, now, um, the death cafes were born in the north of England, very near to where I'm from. John, my friend John lived in Chester, Chester and I lived in Crewe. It's about maybe 15 miles or so away. And he started these death cafes with his mother. And Sue, she's, uh, Sue Barkley, she's, uh, she's actually, was a therapist. And he had this idea that he wanted to do it. So they started it, actually, in the north of England. And it, 
caught on very, very fast. Now, why would it catch on? People really need to talk about death. How they want to be remembered. What do they want? How can you put the fun back in funeral? You know? All this stuff. <laughs> really? So, it, so the Death Cafes were born in uh, 2011. And then John called me up like last, um, I've been over here since the 70s actually. John called me up and he said, You, you know what? You work in hospice. Why don't you start a Death Cafe? So I, I did it last, started it April last year at my house. And, and we didn't tell that many people. And, I, and Alan Leventhal, who does it with me, you know, my roommate, um, we got so many people in the house. And then I was talking to Anne over here at Ethical. And she said, well, you can do it here. So then we, we brought everybody over here. But it was just amazing. And, and what that tells me is that people are hungry to talk about this thing called death, but it has been kind of like, oh, God, you know, you know, it's not, I mean, just try going to a business meeting and talking about, oh, I was thinking about my funeral the other day and what I'd like. People would back away. <laughs> when I go, when I go to a party and I tell people I work in hospice, people step back like they think they're going to catch it, you know? Or they'll say, oh, that must be really hard. But actually, it's really wonderful working in hospice. You get very close to the families. People's hearts are very open. So I work with the entire family when the loved one is, uh, is dying. And these death cafes took this, we started here. You know how many we have? We have over 90 in this country now. All across the United States. 90? 90. 90. Where are they in New York? Well, they're here. This is the, probably the biggest. And my friend Audrey, who's a nurse that I know, she started one, and that's downtown. And my friend Jane Gnu, she started it at her house. She's like a few blocks from me. Sometimes I go to her, sometimes she comes to mine. Yeah. And she also just, oh, and you know what? She also just started one at um, Trinity, Wall Street. Because I was down there, and she said, why don't we pop it, you know? Because I'm so busy at work. But, but she started one there, too, and it's very, very well attended. So she's only had like three meetings, and it's just really... Trinity Church? At Trinity Church? Trinity Church, yeah. Yeah, it's very, they're very open, actually. you got a great graveyard there, so... Oh, it's a wonderful yeah. graveyard. Yeah. Oh, I love, love reading those graveyards. <coughs> yeah, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> and yeah, we also have one at All Souls Church, and also a death cafe that I run at All Souls Church and the Community Church in New York but also a fairly well attended as well. And then I think we're going to be doing one at Riverside Church as well. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, it's... I don't mean to be ridiculous. What do you do at the Death Cafe? I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a Death Cafe. <laughs> Introducing the concept. So, one of the suggestions for a location, St. Paul's Church at Easy Street. Oh, right, where? Right behind 9-11. St. Oh, Paul's, yeah. right oh, yeah. at Deasy Street. Yeah, that's right. That would be yeah. a great location. They have a ba backyard that's a graveyard. And yeah, they do. Given what happened across the street, 9-11. Yeah, 9 yeah. yeah I, I work that. Uh, I'm, I'm also a disaster chaplain in the city of New York. Oh, wow. I work that at the, yeah, at the other memorial. I work with families around for, mm -hmm. since it started, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what do we do? Well, we can usually take a topic, um, like today, um, and we also, why don't we just, actually, what I'd like to do, because I don't know people here, i just sort of like to know what people, what brought people here <laughs> to the death cafe? And did you tell anybody else you were going to a death <laughs> Yes. <laughs> tell me, go ahead. It's really ironic, I got here, um, Yesterday was the um, the first anniversary of my sister's death. We actually buried her a year ago yesterday. Oh, wow. And um, I had some, I was going through some changes since she died February 
28th of last year. Yeah. So just before February came, yeah. there was some things happening to me I didn't understand, and a friend of mine happened to realize, like, you know, Cora, you know, your sister died about a year ago, and when you haven't dealt with, yeah. with, with death, things happen, and uh, Tuesday, I, I ate so much, I caused myself to be constipated. Oh. Um, this was, and I'm like, I, I really didn't know what was going on at the time, I saw tomorrow is the, you know, the anniversary, oh. I thought I said it later. Mm -hmm. And then today, we, we were talking on the phone with my girlfriend, was like, you know, we should start a uh, support group. Uh, you know, so many people at Triple Loss Friends, and I said, you can do that, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm on the internet, not looking for anything in particular, yeah. and I saw the advertisement for this uh, workshop. Oh, how nice. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just, yeah. And I, it's just, 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 it was about, it was about, well, um, the original house, you uh, and then I added four people to the internet. So I'm yeah. just, every time I shit was for a few months, I think I'm going to go to a therapist because you may I haven't be. worked through anything and there's still things that are going on today yeah. um, through the transition. Of course. So I haven't had time yeah. to read. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, just to, everyone believes differently. There's no amount, limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. So just to be kind mm -hmm. to yourself. For whatever way it is, you know, it's right for you, you know. I'm so glad you came. Did you tell anybody you said? You did? Sure. What did you say? Well, I actually, you know, one lady uh, had another patient. I did give her one, um, another lady kind of does this work a little bit, so she's going to keep it in her agenda to come when she can. Oh, and I did hear from the fourth one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was that when, when your regular sessions are? Yeah, yeah. But the regular sessions here are, are um, like we have one this Sunday. Yeah. And we have a panel of people this Sunday. Um, we do it twice a month at Ethical Culture. We do it on a Wednesday and on a Sunday. And actually, there are scheduled outside, I think. And, uh, yeah. But this Sunday we're having, uh, we're actually, someone is, oh, I have a very good friend of mine who's a physician who works with older people, and she's going to talk about the importance of touch, you know, for older people. And um, I have a massage therapist coming in on acupuncture, so it'll be very interesting. <laughs> what yeah. time is it? It's 1.30, actually. On a Wednesday yeah. and Sunday? Uh, uh, Wednesdays it's 2.30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Sunday is one of the two hours. The two hour session. It usually goes more than that. But let me just sort of, I don't want to. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is uh, Claire. I guess I'm here for two reasons. Um, yeah. My brother died in California at the age of 71 a few months ago in the desert. He was walking in 122 degree heat to see a plaque. He'd been to almost every country in the world, and his latest list of things to do was to go to historic plaques. So he was walking in the desert. His wife and son went back to the visitor center and said, we don't want to do this, it's too hot. And he didn't have enough water with him. And they should have called 911 in about 45 minutes. It took him two hours. And then it took the, the um, um, what do you call it, the uh, 911 system, when they finally called, 20 goddamn hours, excuse my French, to find him. Uh, they had two dogs, two helicopters, and 70 rescuers, but it took them 20 hours to find him. Um, the good news is he appeared to be, uh, the quote from the coroner was that he appeared not to have suffered, because he was lying down with all his property next to him, so it didn't look like he just collapsed and died, that he lay down. Um, the unfortunate thing that happened was I went out to be with him, just to be with him for the last time, and uh, when my father died in 58, I didn't get to see his body, and that was a mistake because he died of a heart attack, and I should have had that bridge. I call it a bridge. Yeah. I think seeing a body is a very helpful thing. Very helpful. But given the way my brother died, his three children chose not to see him in the funeral parlor. They were there, but they didn't pull back the sheet. Mm -hmm. And I did very slowly to see if I could handle it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very glad I did, because he just looked like he was African-American, dark tan from the sun, but he didn't have a facial expression that made you go, ooh, you know? So I took a photo in the funeral parlor, and I had been told outside that his wife didn't want any photos taken, but I had no time to call and say, hey, 
I think you could handle the way he looks. I think it might help you to know he didn't suffer it and to see it. But once they learn about it, they just criticize me endlessly. And what I have learned is that anger is a common uh, emotion in, in a death situation. I did it for them so that five years from now, when they were willing, they could finally know that he didn't suffer. Obviously, I want them to remember my brother the way he looked when he was alive, but he didn't look like he suffered, and that's why I took it. Thank you for sharing that. And the other reason I'm here is I have an incurable bone marrow cancer, so I'm on the path, but I've had it for 14 years without treatment, so I'm still here. What can I say? <laughs> without treatment? Right, because they're waiting until I'm in pain. Oh, I see. I'm on what's called watchful waiting, which means you don't do anything until you're in pain because there's so many subtypes of my cancer. Oh, I they don't want to take the chance of the consequences <clears throat> of the treatments. That's the game plan. Thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you for having us. Really, really. Wonderful. Yeah. The whole thing about um, the way we whisk, I mean, I talk a lot to my families about this. Someone dies, the body is whisked away to a funeral parlor. Often people don't have time, you know? People don't, you know, if I'm the chaplain who's on call, I try and, you know, find out whether or not they'd like to wait so oh, yeah. that they could be with the body. Oh, I think it's very helpful. You know, very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, I know of, of some of the Catholic hospitals will, if it die, they die in the hospital, they will do that. They'll, you know, they don't whisk the body out immediately. They're very, very kind and realize that, you know. It's, it's a very helpful bridge is the way I describe it. It's very, very good. Excellent. I love what you're saying. Yeah, I'm Rob, so I'm part of the organization. I yeah. have the privilege to be at every workshop here. And it's all the workshops wonderful. are... It's so nice. <laughs> I'm so happy. So, and I've been to one of your yeah, yeah. workshops at your home. At my house, when we your first house. started. He came over and there. Barbara was in my group here, the okay. exercise group. Yeah. I do every Wednesday it's here. It's exercise group. I love so, it. Anyway. <laughs> Great exercise group. <laughs> Thank you. Fran, do you want to introduce me? I'm Fran, and I work at senior centers. So within a month, I see about 200 seniors. And in the last two years, I think I've heard more about illness than anything else or doctor appointments. So it's made me very conscious about living at a certain age, and also my partner committed suicide mm -hmm. and uh, so, wow. it was something that has taken me well over three years to oh. accept and yeah. um, it's heavy. Oh, it's so yeah. my own feelings about death are a little mixed up. Yeah, listen, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was working in Brooklyn actually, I actually, I had a suicide survivors group that I ran. So this, it, well, it wasn't a, a tragedy. Yeah. Howard was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So in many ways he'd been killing himself for a long time. Yeah. He just so finally happens. found the way to do it. But yeah. um, mm -hmm. it still was very heavy for me. Yeah, sure. oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Thank you for sharing that. Is there a feeling of, shouldn't I have done this, shouldn't I have done that? No, he, that? no. he was a jazz musician. So he was a very attractive, personable person. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, with all due respect to everyone in this room, social workers and therapists were just crazy about him. And he had pills <laughs> like this. <laughs> so it wasn't difficult. He had what doctor? Got pills. Oh, pills. Oh. Uh, that oh. took up uh, three shelves mm. of space. Oh, God. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Sharif. Sharif? Yeah. Sharif? Yeah, I am the director of United Secular American Center for the Disabled and Elderly. Oh, wonderful. Thank uh, we're in Queens. I'm sorry. In Queens. Um, we have a location in Queens called the United Secular American Center for the Disabled and Elderly. I'm one of the directors. Uh, so that's some clinical background. I studied to become an American family therapist. So I'm going to be bringing my counseling. So I know how to run groups, how to do things. But I'm also legally disabled because of my uh, head injury, my head brain surgery. Head, head injury. Head injury, uh -huh. yeah. And 
I have two metal plates, and you know, I, I'm legally disabled, so I have a lot of problems of my own. That's why I became part of this uh, agency. I also have a four-year degree in disability. Uh, a what? For, I have a four-year degree in disability also from CUNY, the University of New York. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. oh so, uh, I see. I just wanted to learn, you know, a little bit from the group so I can, you know, take the experience to our own agency, you know. Oh, well, welcome. So glad you came. I, I work with elderly and disabled. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was actually out in Queensland. We had some patients out there, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the origins. Yeah, I'll give you my card. Yeah, so you do give it to me, yeah. so I'll link you up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Jean. I do not tell anyone else to come here. <laughs> Why? I, I think in thinking about it, it occurred to me that the fear is not, at least from my experience, that the fear is not of death. It might be the journey, what you might have to experience to get there. Okay. Um, and I have yeah, a, friend, a very, very close friend whose husband committed suicide. So I walked that walk with her. Yeah. Um, and in my own family, of course. But it, it's just at an age of, of exploring that, and I thought this would be a supportive way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. I'm glad you came. <laughs> What you say? Well, I, I already told it. Yeah, you told everybody told. who I was. Yeah, right. <laughs> and one of the things that I do on my job is, uh, my day job, is to uh, investigate all deaths that occur in the prison. All deaths. So wow. Since I've been doing it, I've probably done uh, over 8,000, almost 9,000 deaths. Oh, oh, my God. Hearing all the different ways in which people pass on, and I'm determined uh, with the support of Rob, who has really helped me focus on the quality of life while I'm here. Yeah, really. And uh, part of it is, you know, thinking about and planning, you know, on on uh, my funeral, mm -hmm. what it's going to be like, what the music will be like, all these. Oh, good. So, I mean, but but the idea of that. You know, live till you die. Yes. And I imagine, and I, I think that uh, uh, that you, it's been just uh, wonderful to have you come here to uh, the society, which is really could be very dull and stodgy, <laughs> intellectual. It is, isn't it? It is. And I say to them, you know, when I come right. over here, I really want some solace, and I want some. Sanctuary, you know, I want some, you know, a comfort level. I want to be someplace where I can just feel comfortable. And when you, now that you're here, I find that uh, this is, a, you know, a place that I know that is available. Oh, oh I'm so <laughs> What prisons have you been in? Them? What prisons were you in? Oh, many. Oh, prisons. In the state. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Down in Mora? Yeah. Wow. I've been doing the, uh, I actually was uh, the director of a psychiatric hospital until 1999. Oh, which so one? The Metropolitan. Oh, right. Yeah, 200 beds for yeah. care out of the facility. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I did uh, as a volunteer was working in the prisons doing this kind of work mm -hmm. um, as a psychiatrist. But then um, I retired. Yeah. And, um, I thought I was retired, but I had a lot of caregiving to do. My, my mm -hmm. husband and my mother died over a period of time. Yeah. We were both mm -hmm. um, in, in, uh, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, uh, and then I, then I, I did uh, some um, boutique psychiatry with a very, well-known movie star and Aww. his family, Aww. and that that was kind of that was kind of fun. And I came back thinking, you know, what am I going to now? What am I going to do with this retirement? <laughs> and uh, all the, the I was still volunteering in the right. state, in the and state. then they asked me if I would consider taking on the job as commission. Wow. And that was five years ago. So five years ago. <laughs> oh my God. Did you work with any death row inmates? I helped get rid of the death penalty in New York, so I'm just curious. I, I'm not. 
politically. I'm not going to talk politically here. Yeah. Well, it's been 50 years since we had an execution, but we've had death row inmates. I don't know whether you work, worked with them in prison. I am not the psychiatrist in the prisons. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. I regulate and monitor what yeah, you do that. they do yeah. that. Oh, I see. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. I used to work in the prisons, actually. Mm -hmm. I taught for Mercy College. I, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. did art and art history and loved my prisoners. So I just moved them and it's so neat. <laughs> We actually had an art show, a big art show for my prisoners. Oh, they were wonderful artists. They really put their art into it. You know, it was beautiful. Lucy College loves it. <laughs> it's here for you. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle. I'm a geriatric nurse practitioner. Okay. Uh, care manager, psychotherapist. I work with Rob. I work with Irene. Um, and I work mostly with people who are dying, some of them more slowly than others, but they all have some kind of chronic terminal illness. Um, so this is kind of the world I live in, and I like it. You um, like it. I love right? it, actually. Um, so, when I saw this, okay, so when I saw this, I said, I have to come, okay. because yeah. it's kind of not that many places you can say, yeah. I love this. I know, um, right? So, sorry. <clears throat> I'm a social worker. I work with old people, um, and often they are in the last stages yeah. of dying. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in new ways to approach that mm -hmm. and to help the people I work with approach their deaths. Mm -hmm. And I found that doing that work makes me more appreciative mm -hmm. of my life now. Mm -hmm. And it's a light in which I look mm -hmm. at my priorities. Yeah. differently, mm -hmm. you know, and given that I've got a finite time left, That's right. and using that to say, well, what do I really want to do? What's really important to me? Very good. So that's for me personally, but also for my clients. Yeah. It's, you know, in this limited time, what's important yeah. to you? What's important? Do you work with one agency? Or no, I'm mean, private. Oh, yeah, okay. Great. Okay. Um, Marina? Mm -hmm. um, I recently retired, and because um, I was forced to focus on myself more, and yeah. kind of just get involved in some kind of uh, putting things in order, because you didn't have time before. Um, and one of them is um, planning um, for issues of um, mm -hmm. death and dying. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I saw the um, fly around when I came in before. And then um, I told one of my friends, she said, no, 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 the one that used to come. No, 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 no I don't want to do that. So then I had another friend said, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to go. But it was always in an avoiding walk. I never got here. Yeah. So when I saw that, they, I looked on the computer, and I saw that they incorporated in this meeting. I said, this, this is good because I know I could get here right. um, to get more of an idea of what is what." What goes on in the in the cafe? Oh, in, in death cafe. Yeah. Oh, death cafes. Yeah. So it's so it's weird and villainous because I have a very dear friend. She always says to me, "Mara, is now all this sick and old and die, you know?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's something that we. I mean, even though I say I'm planning, it's not always sick and old. I was hit by a vehicle, and I'm nothing happened, but it was a pretty serious bang. But it was still, I mean, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. So, were well, you lucky? Um, man, and I was at jail going to the gym. Yeah. You know, so it's something to think about. Because it's for anybody. Listen, we're all going there. There's no way we're all going there. You know, we may have a good time along the way. That's what I think. <laughs> so, here's Eva here. Hi, uh, I'm actually one of the Death Cafe people, so I'm a, 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 a protege. <laughs> right! <laughs> I'm a student in training for death. <laughs> there you go. No, uh, when I told people that I was going to death, first of all, when I first heard about it, I said, what did you say? <laughs> death Cafe. I said, 
D, E, which you're sure I wasn't hearing. I'm sure my hearing was starting to go, and that's it. It's the end of it. You know, it's D, E, A, T, A. How do you talk about it? <laughs> what is this about? People hanging around. And it really is about life and death. Yeah. And facing the natural occurrences that happen in life and death. It's a cycle and it's a thing. And I've been coming to the Death Cafes yeah. at Ethical Culture for, um, since the uh, fall, back in yeah. the late summer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> late summer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And yeah. started, I just happened in there at that point. Yeah, right. And I'm smitten. I think <laughs> the music. it's I'm interesting to get together with people of your own, of, of one's. Um, Milieu, not only in age, but also in outlook and in thinking, also a variety of things. It's, we don't talk about death for so many reasons, mm -hmm. and it's so stupid. Yeah. It's just so stupid. God, I mean, we have kids who really think they are immortal because they never hear about death mm -hmm. unless somebody mm -hmm. dies. And then, oh, they've gone to visit so and so, yeah. or they're in heaven, or they're, you know, they're somewhere. That is, that is the cycle of life is not part of our life. And I think that this is what's mm -hmm. the most important <laughs> part of the education. Now, I, I know Barbara will go into it, but I just want to make sure that she doesn't miss this. Not only are there sessions on literally what to do. How do you prepare for death? Uh, how do you prepare for a proxy in case you're at a point in your care where, or somebody else's family member or friends who can't uh, represent themselves and you know what they want, is, you know, the people know what you want, that you can have your wishes carried out, because very often they're not. Mm -hmm. They're disregarded. It's a question of what's most convenient and what's most efficient for the doctors, for the hospital, for the nursing home. You're the last one on the list that they care about what you want it. Mm -hmm. So that's important to have that, you know, know what the legalities are, where we are here in New York State, yeah. to know what's happening, and that was extremely valuable session. Yeah, yeah, and the healthcare proxy. The healthcare proxy, yeah. the professionals yeah, came very, in and addressed yeah. it and talked yeah. about it's it, very and, and, and we yeah. keep reiterating. Yeah. But there yeah. are other things, there are things about the quality of life, what we think about death, how we face it, what do we do we talk about it, how we, funerals. Somebody came in and had a whole session, a funeral director. Yeah, we have a funeral director on our staff. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah, she's what a incredible. fascinating... Yeah. It's got films that we saw. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. so moving and so touching, mm -hmm. made by hospice care workers. Yeah. Or, you know, but it's not just about... It's the process of living to the fullest that we all address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. especially, and that's really what's addressed in the death cafe. So as yeah. you said, you know, it's a question... We, we never, none of us know how much time we have left at any age in our life, any age. So now, now, what are you doing now? Yeah. What are you doing mm -hmm. this moment, this day, this mm -hmm. moment? You know, that's all we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get, we're granted more. Well, and we're lucky. We have another moment to look over. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. But and I have people who've told me, "Hey, you seem to be obsessed with this death." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we so much I'm kind fun. of obsessed with life, <laughs> it's kind of, and it's a lot of fun. Is it the same people that come all the time? Uh, uh, there are a core, there's a core group. There's in and out group. movement of people, yeah. but we've had extraordinary panels, oh, yeah, which uh, panel. Barbara <laughs> has devised and come up with magnificent topics to talk about. This Sunday's is going to be a bad yeah. touch, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, the, the, it's one last the one last one with some. Um, we had a panel of people who are fairly successful in theater and different have names for themselves. And um, they actually talked about how their creativity had either changed or expanded as they got older. It was very, very interesting. What? A, there was an incredible was a panel. panel. That was, that yeah. Was you had one lady, 93. She still works with the American Ballet Theatre as a choreographer. What? It blew us away. We said, well, you know, no, no, we're no, waiting no. for you. Know. Wait, wait a second, she was yeah. on our panel, you know. So <clears> anyway, <throat> it's just very, very uplifting. It's all the aspects of living. Yeah. You know, and, 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 we, and more than just, not just all people attend the death cafes. No, people of all ages. And that's, I think, yeah. extremely important. 
people who are also taking care of the older parents up to a good So that's very useful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what uh, really, well, the other thing I should just say, does anybody not have a health care proxy here? I just want... Okay, we you got it. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. I don't like the idea of <laughs> what? Mm. Oh you didn't get to talk. Either. Oh you didn't get to talk. Oh she didn't get to talk. Do you have the forms for the health? Yes, I just you know what? I just